Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. It is part 70 and do you know what I didn't do this weekend? <laughs> a lot of things. I didn't do a lot of things but yeah one of them was uh, see a movie. Yeah I don't really see movies man. I really don't. <laughs> it's it's a thing. What was the last like film I watched? <laughs> In theaters? Yeah, actually, actually it was the, the Top Gun film that came out last year for, like, reasons. I don't know. It was more like, it was more like, I, I didn't really go to my own accord, yeah. And actually, in, like, in the end of 2019, like, I actually watched a Star Wars film, so I can't say that I nev I've never watched <laughs> uh, a Star Wars film. <laughs> that was also another occasion where I was, like, where it wasn't really my choice to go, <laughs> I guess. I guess that's all I'll reveal about that. But, yeah, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I watched a movie. I don't know. I, I, it was, was there any good ones? I don't know. <laughs> was, was, anything? Anything good? I don't know. Well, one documentary I want to see is this, like, yeah, uh, Oscar De La Hoya documentary that, uh, just got released on HBO Max because, you know, I'm probably into that sort of thing. <laughs> I am very familiar with Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy, you know, it's, a uh, he was a very popular, very w well-renowned boxer, and, like, you know, the, the stuff he's been doing lately, his legacy hasn't been... I don't know, not his legacy, I don't think his legacy is being impacted, but, like, him, like, he made a transition at the end of his career, or, like, even, like, nearing the end of his career, yeah. I think it was, like, sometime during the 2000s, like, that he started his promotional company uh, in boxing called Golden Boy Promotions, and he brought on people he used to ha uh, fight. <laughs> Uh, a couple people he fought with, yeah, Bernard Hopkins, who gave him a brutal body shot knockout, and Shane Mosley are, like, uh, I think, like, people who are still involved in Golden Boy uh, promotions. So, yeah, he started at some time in, like, the early to mid-2000s, I would think, right? And, yeah, it's still going, but, you know, Ryan Garcia is one of the boxers uh, on, like... Uh, most prominent boxers on like Golden Boy's uh, roster today, and I don't know, man. There's been, there's been some tension within that relationship. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I talked about it, but uh, after the Ryan Garcia Gervonta Davis fight, like Ryan Garcia has like tweeted since then that like, you know, it was just things in 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 the in terms of like he had like he felt he had a mole in his camp <laughs> that was that was disappointing. He tweeted that he tweeted that like a day or two after, and then he w and then he tweeted later on, like a few weeks later, that like he kind of felt sad because there wasn't yeah after his loss there wasn't many people who came to like uh like greet him like there wasn't many people from his team that came to meet him like he uh, it seemed like he was alone he said uh, in that tweet after his loss i don't know just some things and it, it was a thing that oscar de la hoya his promoter <laughs> uh did not show up after that fight yeah i did not know i would be going on in this direction i'm just i'm just going okay i know i know where i should be heading back to but it's like you know i'm not i'm not i'm not you know there's a whole plan here okay <laughs> so yeah i guess that was the thing yeah anything about oscar de la hoya He's a boxer, he's like, you know, great. <laughs> His career got ended by Manny Pacquiao, man. Oh, God. It was a... T I remember that so well, man. I remember that fight so well. It, it's just, like... Uh, other people have, like, nostalgia of, like, freaking, I don't know, watching <laughs> basketball or baseball, but it's like, yeah. I wrote a whole poem about it. It's like, yeah, I have nostalgia. Heavy, heavy nostalgia. My childhood memories were all formed around boxing and like that's why uh specifically more speci yeah more specifically hbo boxing maybe a little bit of showtime too but you know just yeah watching <laughs> Manny pacquiao fight uh de la hoya in like december of 08 it was just it was a time man yeah like i remember remembering the specific calls like jim lampley saying manny pacquiao is annihilating oscar de la hoya and then, oh god, ooh, that was close, that was close. <laughs> and then Larry Merchant following that up with Death by a Thousand le Left Hands, and it's like, oh man, what a time. Yeah, and that was basically the fight that, like, launched Pacquiao uh, from, like, he's a he's a pretty, a pretty good fighter, he's one of the best fighters in the world to, like, he, no, he's, like, a superstar, you know? 
And like with each subsequent fight with Hatton and then Kodo and then Claudie Margarito, right? I think I have that in order. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, after De La Hoya, it's Hatton, Kodo, Claudie Margarito 2011, Marquez Tree, Marquez Tree, Bradley Marquez 4, and then 2013 is Rios, and then Chris Algieri, right? No, I think it's like Rios. Bradley 2 and then Chris Algieri and then and then Mayweather and then Bradley Tree. Yeah, I might be missing one there, but yeah Yeah, and then like what what happens after 2016 <laughs> Jeff Horn <laughs> and then he got robbed uh, a lot of people, you know I don't know. Yeah after that. It's kind of like okay. Yeah, but like th that era specifically like 08 to 2012 Oh, man, it was a time <laughs> th That was those those were my very those were very strong childhood memories for me. So Yeah, how does this tie back into Oscar De La Hoya? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, one of my most fondest memories of Oscar De La Hoya is watching him just get beat to to a pulp by Manny Pacquiao. It's like yeah, I don't know, it must have been surprising to see that. Uh, I would assume a lot of boxing experts probably thought that uh, uh, Pacquiao could w would have won that fight. But there probably were some people being like, nah, De La Hoya is the much bigger fighter. It's like, how can Pacquiao like move up and wait and like uh, beat him like that? <laughs> yeah, really, a, a big coming out party for Pacquiao in that moment. So, yeah, I guess. I'm interested in seeing that documentary, as in, you know, yeah, the one that came out on HBO Max, because I haven't seen that many movies recently. I don't know, I just don't really... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm being so coy. Like, I, like, like, all of it is basically being spoiled on Twitter, man. <laughs> it's like, did you know the Barbie movie has all this monologue about women and, like, mothers and Greta Gerwig has said this and, like, how beautiful it is? Did you know? And then it's like, yeah, I'll get to it in the, uh, uh <laughs> not Twitter segment, but it's still the Twitter segment. I'm still gonna call it that. I'll get to it, but yeah. And then meanwhile, it's like, oh wow, this freaking movie about a man. Uh, should he, should Christopher Nolan have included the Japanese perspective in the film? Is it? Yeah, like this movie is about uh, uh, a white man and do, doing, doing a terrible thing and, and everyone going along with it. It's like, yeah, okay, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. Why should I care about any of this? <laughs> <sighs> you know what I also don't care about? You know what I also don't care about? Miami Heat fans, man. Can you please, like, stop? Can you please stop freaking being so entitled? You're going to get Dame. You're going to get him. Like, I don't know. You're going to get him. Eventually. But, like, how I want it to be is that I want the Blazers to freaking wait as long as they want, man. Take as much time as you want, okay? Look, man. It's fine. Cool. Great. I don't know. I, I guess it's like, and people on NBA Twitter always have to have, like, content they make. They always have to, like, talk about their favorite teams and defend their favorite teams. But it's like, I don't know. Look, man. Look, Heat fans. Anyone in Miami. Anyone rooting for the Heat. You're going to get him. You're, go you're gonna get him. It's like, yeah, you're probably gonna get him. It's like, it's almost like a sure shot that you're gonna get him. And the Heat are probably gonna be a really good team. I don't know. That's the thing I've been thinking about, is that, like, everyone's talking about, like, the whole, like, trade scenario that hasn't happened yet. I keep on, I ha have a running joke in my head <laughs> whenever I check the NBA subreddit that I just, that, like, I expect the first thing I see <laughs> to be like, maybe there's a chance that the Dame trade happened today. <laughs> but I just keep, I just think it's funny, man. And whenever I have it in my head, like, right before I check our NBA, which is, like, daily, like, twice a day, I'm like... Maybe this could be today. Maybe this could be it. <laughs> and then it still hasn't happened. Oh, man. I don't know. It's, it's I'm just, okay, I've just fallen so far in this. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, true, obviously. I, I feel like RNBA is mostly on the side of like, yeah, why should the Blazers freaking trade him now? <laughs> like, what benefit does it give them, <laughs> you know? I mean, obviously, it's like you kind of want to, you kind of, the writing's on the wall that, the, that you know, the time is like, shifted. The era has kind of moved on to Scoot Henderson and, like, young players, but it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. There really, is, there really isn't any benefit to trading 
uh, him like this deep into the offseason. Like trade him. Like don't don't let him. Don't you know? I, it's not an anti Dame thing too. It's it's more it's more of like a it's more of like a, a pro entertainment aspect for me. It's not. Yeah, my thoughts on this isn't like really like anti player empowerment or pro player empowerment or or pro organization or anti organization. I don't know. I don't, yeah, and I don't think it's really that simple either. Like, I don't think, like, I don't think, uh, like, supporting, I don't think saying that the Blazers should, shouldn't immediately take the Heat's offer isn't, like, anti-player empowerment. I don't think so. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's also, I don't think saying that opinion is also like, oh, you're just pro-organization, you're just pro these billionaire owners then, huh? It's like, I don't think so, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a thing, the concept of, like, player empowerment. There can be a whole, like, thing done about that. Like, how many players have been empowered, you know? <laughs> like, very few, very few. And it's like, when it's a, when uh, it comes to a player that people feel absolutely shouldn't be in, a position where they can quote bargain and like you know have leverage uh you know like ben simmons <laughs> it's like people immediately don't like that you know i don't know <laughs> or you know someone on the sixers you know who's having like a fun time <laughs> uh i don't know it's it, it's it's a thing i don't know <laughs> am i is it a thing of being pro player or pro organization like a, a binary in terms of like uh, wanting uh, the Blazers to to not immediately take the Heat's offer, or like maybe uh, the Blazers holding out hope that there can be another team that jumps in other than the Heat. I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, the concept of like player empowerment is like there's very few players. Yeah, it, it's it's there's very few players who can have that position you know of like being able to demand like trades and like being able to gu guide themselves exactly to exactly the destination they want and you know it's been a, it's becoming a topic of discussion recently like should you know like ha has it gone too far you know has it in my opinion i don't know i don't like it, it's too I, I don't think i necessarily have too many strong opinions i just have a very like extreme casual like view of it of like if it's a player i like <laughs> if it's a player uh i like i'm like cool okay that's fine <laughs> i i think it's i think it's fine for players to demand trades but you know it, it it also doesn't mean that you know but i feel like a lot of people would also say like yeah it's cool for players to demand trades and like uh if they don't feel like they're in the best situation to win a championship because that's what a bunch of freaking nba fandom is centered around like have you won a, did you win a championship or didn't you if you didn't win a championship well then you kind of suck then <laughs> if you do win a championship well then god yeah you you all you'll always have that so you know i don't know <laughs> so, and and like yeah there's uh what's i going on with <laughs> and like yeah it like i feel like a player should have the right to do that but should an organization uh, have the right to not like give in to every single demand and like actually be like no actually you know okay you want to trade super insert superstar here well we're just gonna wait it out we're just like like we know you have this list of like teams here but like well you know we want the best offer okay like we want to if we if we're gonna trade you and freaking like enter a lengthy rebuilding process like you know and we want our fans to trust it like i i feel like we need to like survey the landscape a bit longer and and not imme immediately send you to the place you want you know and obviously like the recent people who have requested trades have basically gotten to exactly where they want you know katie wanted the suns he got the suns well <laughs> yeah you know uh, AD, uh, in 2019, wanted the Pel wanted the Lakers, he got the Lakers, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the whole, like, Paul George and, like, Kawhi thing, it's like, Kawhi wanted to go to LA, like, either Clippers or Lakers, but I think, like, yeah, the, the, the whole thing behind that was that, like, he's like, I want another player with me, I want a, I want a number two, and Paul George was the, the, the number two that was chosen, <laughs> yeah. And, if, you know, I don't know. Shoulder, yeah, like, I, I guess. I guess it's, you know, I guess that I would assume my opinion is also the opinions of most, like, 
NBA fans, I don't know. <laughs> but, like, Heat fans especially are kind of just like, the Blazers are not listening to, to the trade offers right now. Why, like, come on, man. <laughs> and, like, having to, like, yeah, having to constantly be like, look, 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 it's, it's all, this is all on the Blazers here. They're choosing, why are they just playing hard? Why are they choosing not to freaking trade Dame here? It's like, like, okay, look, he's gonna get there eventually, man. He's gonna get there eventually, <laughs> okay? Oh, man. Yeah, so, so I guess that's that scenario because not much else going on in the uh, NBA front. <laughs> good for good, good for this series, right? Yeah. Also, not good for like this series. The fact that I don't really do anything gameplay-wise. <laughs> I mean, I try, but it's like it's just too distracting. I don't know. I could go back to how, yeah, again, I could go back to how I was before and just, like, focus on what I'm doing in the game, but, like, well, I don't want to do that. I like, uh, what I do now of, like, having a constant, uh, conversational true line all the way, all the way, uh, throughout an episode. Yeah, I guess I'll just dig some of this gravel up while I tink up of something else. Uh, uh, sparkling water, it's good, right? Yeah. Man, dude, LaCroix, man, dude, I've been drinking a lot more, like, LaCroix and, like, Bubbly recently, yeah, more than usual, it's just good, man, I don't know, I, I don't, I think I will always have a desire to, like, drink, uh, soda, but it's, like, at least for now, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, sparkling water really is hitting that, like, 80%, 85% of, like, what I value in a good, uh, soda that's refreshing, yeah, Oh man, uh, similar to that on the topic of like a ting that isn't really anything uh, media related. Uh, dude, these, these in this inflation, man, it's it's I don't know, man. I just saw that like I just saw that like a Gatorade, like a gate, like a the, like the because they already freaking. Does anyone remember <laughs> the, the 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 time when there were thirty two ounce uh, bottles of Gatorade? Cause I do. That was like twenty freaking nineteen or something. But like since the pandemic, the only available yeah the only available bottle of Gatorade is freaking twenty eight. It's weird, isn't it? They just gave up those four ounces. Those four ounces are just not there anymore. Like I don't yeah. There was a John Oliver bit about it and like someone commenting on it and he's like yeah they they changed. It because to Gatorade, according to Gatorade, it provides a better grip. <laughs> Big whoop or something. It's like, dude, yeah, like, what, what? Seriously, man, what happened to those four ounces? Why, why are you just so skimping out on four ounces, man? Real, like, four ounces? Like, really? Like, you decided to, to, like, scrap a whole bottle design because of four ounces and, like, the sem the, the freaking dumb excuse of, like, nah, nah, it's better to grip it. It, 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 it provides an easier grip. I mean, look, I, the design is kind of, the, the, the design is better, but, like, where are those four ounces? Like, I want, like, do you, do you know, do you know what four ounces is? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine me saying that in like an alleyway? It's like, do you know what four ounces is? <laughs> Look, I, I, I know what four ounces is in, in liquid, okay? I don't know, man. I feel like four ounces are kind of significant. I don't know. It, it's kind of significant. Yeah. And like the price of it has gone up. Like I remember it being like $1.50. It's, and then maybe it went up to like a dollar sixty, and then one ninety nine, and then most recently I was at the grocery store, and a twenty eight ounce bottle of Gatorade is two dollars and twenty nine cents. Twenty eight ounces is two dollars and twenty nine cents for Gatorade. Like, are you kidding me, man? Like, ser like, w what are we doing here? I don't know, man. Yeah, obviously there's just like so many. Like there isn't one like cause of inflation. It's it's you can't you can't just be like tanks insert president here. It's like you can't be like that. You can't do that. You can't be that, you know, simple minded. But it's like it, it is a thing that like some of these like price increases, some of these inflation price increases are kind of significant. They really are. Yeah, I talked. I think I talked about it before, right? Of like. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm, it's fine for me, I guess. I'm, I'm mostly financially secure. My family's mostly financially secure. But it's like, I don't know, man. It just it must be a lot. 
in this day and age. There's been people who've been posting, like, pictures of, like, groceries, and they're like, this is what $100 gets you, and it's, like, six, like, s seven to ten, like, items. It's, like, cereal, and then it's, like, freaking, like, like a, like a, like a 12-pack of Diet Coke or something. <laughs> there was one who posted, like, uh, a picture of their grocery shopping cart, and it included, like, stuffed mushrooms, and it included, like, those, like, you know, those, like, packages of, like, pre-marinated, pre-seasoned, like, chicken or pork or something, right? And then the quote tweets were like, why are you freaking, like, buying those pre-packaged things? Those are a scam, you know? And, like, I mostly agree, but, like, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's basically based on the price. To me, it's, like, if you have, like, one of those, like, yeah, there's, like, uh, one of those, like, pa pre-packaged things where it's, like, two kind of pork chops for, like, six dollars and it's like 16 ounces which is like a pound uh yeah exactly so i mean that i feel like is a generally good deal you know i don't know it really is a thing yeah also like the things that you know <laughs> i don't know like my childhood my childhood i'm old enough to remember the five dollar foot long i'm old enough to remember when like a little caesar's pizza was only five dollars and it's like I don't, like, these price increases, they're, like, tiny, but it's, like, yeah, I don't know. It must have been a thing, like, <laughs> you know, uh, growing up in the 80s or something, and it's, like, oh, you could, like, eat, you could go to McDonald's and, like, have, like, a meal for two. You could, like, two people could eat, like, a filling meal there for, like, ten bucks. <laughs> and now it's, like, ten bucks is just, like, one freaking like, like, a big, a Big Mac and fries and that's it. It's, like, God, like, seriously, man. I don't know. There have been people who have been, like, like, I don't know. Nah, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what I was saying about people, but, like, I don't know, people comparing, like, prices of, like, five dollars? That's just a Starbucks. And I'm, like, damn, dude, five dollars, man? Dude, five dollars a day? <laughs> and like the whole like just 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 get yeah, just you know if you wanna you know you know if you wanna freaking increase your socioeconomic status, yeah. I've been going on this again. This is a, a repeat of freaking what I talked about. I remember this exact thing. <laughs> this is the remastered version because uh it's like yeah, this this is the remastered version. Uh when I said this. Uh yeah, like just, just, just stop, just stop ordering Starbucks so much. Yeah, you're gonna save five dollars each time. You know, you know how much that adds up. You, you know how much that adds up when you're making a budget and like you wanna, you know, save money and freaking like grind to like, you know, uh, go from <laughs> working class to middle class, you know, or something. It's like, yeah, that's the difference. Is like, uh, <laughs> just one freaking five dollar purchase of Starbucks. It's, but it's still, it's like, I don't know, I can't really think of, like, paying that much, you know, even, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man, speaking of, uh, drinks, uh, boba's a drink, and that somewhat transitions into a book I read, yeah, I read a book recently, yeah. It's by a Filipino author, yeah, <laughs> about a Filipino main character, yeah. It is called This Is Not A Personal Statement by, uh, an author called Tracy Badua, hmm. Yeah, and, like, on the cover is, like, a girl, like, holding a bunch of textbooks that are, like, highlighted, and, like, uh, she's, like, wearing, like, a college, like, sweater. Uh, yeah, and then, like, on top of it, the very top of it is, like, boba. <laughs> yeah, so, what is this book about? Give me, yeah, <laughs> to give you a brief plot summary. It is about this 16-year-old girl who's, like, this overachiever. She has upper middle class parents, basically, upper middle class to rich parents. Uh, the girl's name is Perla Perez, and uh, <laughs> she's at this school called Monte Verde High School, right? And she's about to graduate, and then it's about around the time when college uh, admissions college admissions letters get uh, sent out and like people find out if they're accepted or rejected and then there's this school called Delmont which is like the school like that she uh, and her parents have agreed is like the the place she's going to go because her life is like set on a track a perfectly planned and organized track of that she's going to go to this high-end private school she's going to like study there she's gonna get a undergrad degree and then she's gonna be a doctor you know and then like carry on the legacy 
uh, of their parents. Because the interesting thing about it I found was that her parents are second generation immigrants. They're not immediately like they her parents didn't immigrate from uh, america to the philippines they're they're that's their grandparents so yeah i guess brief explanation on second first generation so her parents are the children of the the people who uh, grew, uh were born in the philippines and then uh first immigrated to america in search of a better life and probably know all the immigrant freaking like tropes and stuff of like you know being hard on your children expecting them to have a better life and it's interesting seeing it from a second generation immigrant perspective you know there aren't much like like uh like flashes of filipino culture and like in it you know which is like fine yeah i don't, I don't know you know I, I, i'm not really expecting that i just think it's cool i'll just read whatever like filipino like a filipino american book there is but yeah that was an interesting tidbit like i noticed right and i guess it kind of plays into the story too that like you know like her grandparents were the ones who like uh were like who had that all that uh pressure of like building a life for their children and then their children like basically did the american dream they freaking studied hard they studied hard in america and then they themselves became successful doctors and lawyers right her yeah perla's father is a lawyer perla's mother is like a doctor with her own uh skin doctor dermatologist with her own practice and stuff and yeah like like and then i guess they they want her to continue on the legacy that you know uh they continued well that day started yeah in america so yeah uh <laughs> yeah i'm not even like halfway true yeah true <laughs> uh, uh the, the acceptances and the rejections get freaking sent out and then one fateful day uh, before graduation perla finds out oh no she actually did not get in to this school she did not get into delmont university whatever whatever is she gonna do is she gonna tell her parents no here's what she does here's what she does she's like okay i'm freaking perfect perla perez you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna freaking forge my acceptance letter i'm gonna forge my acceptance letter and pretend that i got in and you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna masquerade as a student for a whole semester while i write my personal statement and and me freaking impersonating a student for a whole semester is gonna help me because I'm gonna do research. I'm gonna go undercover. I'm gonna freaking like study uh, in depth the student body. I'm gonna study. I'm gonna take like a bio class because you know like uh, because I'm gonna major in biological sciences. I'm gonna do all of this stuff, pretending to be a student like like cra uh, like tr finding like an empty dorm room, which he does, right? And like I'm gonna I'm gonna make a friend like who can help me around and like who can like. Like show me uh like what this school is like and what the student uh life is like and i'm going to freaking uh write my rewrite my own personal statement to get accepted act into this school for the spring semester and she actually does that yeah that's what she does uh she has this whole like spreadsheet freaking thing for all of this right she like she plans it to the very like to almost to excruciatingly uh minute details of like housing options and like what to say when asked about her major or something and like uh like options uh because she doesn't she does not get a student id obviously right and like one of the fun uh uh story bits is when is uh because she doesn't have a student id is that she can't like swipe her card for meals right because apparently like universities have meal plans i mean i wouldn't know yeah like universities their dining halls have meal plans and like how you pay for meals <laughs> in the university dining halls is that you like you get sw you swipe your id card right when you sign up for a meal plan and she doesn't have that so like the friend she makes uh <laughs> like she 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 just like she when she forgets her when she has to like pretend that she forgot her id her friend is like oh no don't worry i'll swipe you in i have a bunch of free meals anyway yeah and then it's it's a whole fun thing it really is it's a nice it's an interesting it's a very interestingly plotted story very yeah interestingly unique because it isn't like the straight up model of like 
I don't know, something like Dim when Dimple met Rishi, where it's like, it it's the dad kind of story of like, my parents want me to do something, but I actually want to do something else, you know? It actually isn't dad, you know? It, ac it actually is more like, uh, dealing with like, how do I deal with all of the expectation and pressure put on me? Like, uh, like, like, I was thinking at the end of it, at the end of the story, is that Perla was driven to do all of this, to impersonate a college student uh, in the hopes, uh, because, yeah, in the hopes of, like, trying to get accepted for the spring semester because of the fact that she was grown up in a, she was raised uh, in a pressure cooker environment and that she friggin', like, had to friggin' be perfect and she has this pressure to be perfect on her, right? She has this confidence to do all this and make all these spreadsheets. She has the confidence because that was how she was raised. It's because of her parents her family freaking made her do that you know that's the thing like if her family if her parents weren't as freaking like harsh and like in terms of like may wanting her to be freaking absolutely perfect maybe she wouldn't have done it she probably wouldn't have done it yeah that's the thing and i found that uh story like really really interesting you know it's pretty good i wouldn't say yeah i it wasn't like i think yeah, it's a pretty good read but i don't know I guess it's hard, you know, I generally, generally just like every book I read at this point, except one that, you know, I probably should talk about or write about, but, yeah, um, uh, I'm not, like, absolutely over the moon, but, like, it's still a pretty damn good story, I don't know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting, man, yeah, it's not exactly, like, it's not exactly, like, uh, a story of, like, a character, like, uh, like, discovering her, like, true passion or something. It's more just a character, like, it's more a character coming to a, re a realization that the way I was raised is kind of wrong, you know? It's like, like, maybe, yeah, like, I, I should try to freaking, I, I should try not being so perfect all the time. I need to be allowed to make my own mistakes and freaking be messy, and you definitely see her do that. Uh, in the story, right? She, like, obviously, like, it's a facade she has to keep up, and it takes a lot of energy, so there's, like, moments where it slips, you know? And, like, yeah, I guess I'm spoiling too much at this point, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the book I read. Anything, uh, any other thoughts on it? Oh, yeah, it reminded me of another series. Because, like, the, the one thing I keep on, the one thing I was thinking throughout the whole story is that the reason why... Yeah, I guess it's like tiny spoiler. The plan doesn't exactly work out, okay? <laughs> the plan doesn't exactly work out. And like one of the reasons why her plan doesn't exactly work out in my mind is that it's precisely because of like her as a person, right? Is because her she is grown up like having to only focus on academics, only freaking focus on extracurriculars that will intentionally help her build her college resume and stuff like that, you know? Like, all of this stuff. Like, she wasn't given the opportunity. She never had to, like, be uh, street smart, as I call it, or, like, quote-unquote, which I was thinking was, was somewhat the reason <laughs> uh, behind the downfall of the story, right? It's pretty... I don't know. I was thinking, like... She got, like, 80% of the way there, like, true, pure freaking like, academic, like, book smart, like, what, how she was raised of, like, you always have to get good grades, you always have to ace every class, you always have to, like, uh, do all this test prep and stuff, like, yeah, but, like, in terms of, like, practical, like, 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 just how to, like, talk to people, like, she doesn't know how to do that, she specifically doesn't, like, know how to, like, maintain, like, friendships that much, because she, she, yeah, she didn't have that many friends, like, all of, like, uh, her school, her high school, like, was, like, a bunch of rivalries, right? It was a bunch, yeah, it was, like, it, was, it, it, there was no time to make friends or do any of the stuff like that, yeah, so, like, she, in, in, ter yeah, so because of that, she doesn't know how to, like, I don't know, like, maneuver, like, social situations as much, right? Which is, like, yeah, yeah, which I found really interesting. I don't know. And I found it really interesting because there's another show with a Filipino main character who, like, is also in, in, uh, has a plot of attempting to con someone or defraud someone or, like, masquerade as something you're not. And, like, you know, that Netflix show, <laughs> that Netflix show... Uh, the main character 
is almost gets by almost entirely due to being street smart and like thinking on your feet and like being like quick witted and, and stuff like that. There isn't, yeah. I mean, it's, it doesn't mean the character isn't book smart. Probably it doesn't mean the character isn't like you know like uh, always academically like freaking uh, on top of things because in that show like they I think they say that like she could like do better but she isn't necessarily like applying herself a hundred percent right yeah because yeah which I found it really interesting it's kind of like the yin and the yang the the flip side of the coin of that <laughs> this is not a personal statement and you know that Netflix show <laughs> oh man it's good that's that's what I was thinking of <laughs> I guess I've uh, if I remember to edit I'm just gonna flash it up on screen now <laughs> Please, please, let me remember. I've been forgetting a lot of editing prompts lately. I'm sorry about that. So, yeah, that's a few topics I got to. Oh, man. Oh, man. Only, like, what? Okay, all right. <laughs> See, these go by so freaking fast now. I don't know. Anything else I've been listening... Anything else I've been listening to? Uh, <laughs> I've been listening to... Uh, uh, some yeah just the local natives album uh the latest one it's pretty good new, new year's eve especially i uh if i haven't mentioned it in the last episode is probably my favorite song from that album like pretty much all of it yeah i talked about how it has like a slower tempo but it's still like the same like local natives kind of like aesthetic and style that they're known for you know harmonies are there you know like in the, the instrumentation is like mostly like similar to their previous work but it's just like yeah but there's just a lot more like slower like moodier type of songs you know uh and like nye new year's eve is like the most like energetic of those songs yeah it's very it's very apt for summer yeah <laughs> even though it's called new year's eve you know and the last song paradise is like really good and you can really and I, and I think with that song in particular the the song paradise the line paradise is on fire right i think you can you know reasonably deduce that it it was written during the pandemic or like you know around that time i would assume right because their last album came out in 2019 and this album came out you know just this year like when else would they be writing the album <laughs> It almost had to have been like 2021 too, you know, it like throughout those past few years. So yeah, that's basically, yeah, that album, any other new music, man, <laughs> still haven't listened to that Home Is Where album, man. <laughs> man, I don't know. I've been disappointing with, in terms of catching up with new releases. I don't know. I haven't been also, also haven't been on the Indie Head subreddit lately. <laughs> I'll go back on it. I, I will. <laughs> At some point in time. So, yeah, I guess that's what I've been doing. Anything else? Anything else I've interested in? I've been interested in. Uh, yeah, do I have an update on <laughs> anime? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Look, man, it's it's an it's an interesting thing that uh, two really good animes uh, that are harems and rom coms and are actually good have to do with studying. I don't know. <laughs> One of them in particular, man. Oh god, dude. Yeah, uh, I've been having like somewhat uh, a similar vibe to 2020, like spring summer of 2020. Uh, not many good parts of that time. Uh, the 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 very few parts of that time for me, like mid twenty twenty, uh, was well, yeah, one starting this channel, uh, and like uploading uh, videos, yeah, and also uh, like reading manga, yeah, <laughs> on uh a site. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Yeah, it got taken down once, man. It got taken down by hackers, and then it got put up again, man. You cannot, I mean, I don't know, man. It, 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 it's fine, but yeah. Uh, I'm talking about the quintessential quintuplets, man. Yeah, not much really to say about it. I don't know. It's about a guy who helps a set of quintuplets study because they're not that smart, <laughs> not that academically gifted like Perla Perez. And yeah, it's a harem uh, rom-com because of that, and it's not too, and it's and it's absolutely not 
uh, too fan servicey. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other one is called We Can't Study. Yeah, We Can't Study. Boku Ben. We Never Learn. Yeah, that's also a pretty good series, too. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just got finished with the second season. Oh, the season of Quintuplets after like. Uh, yeah, cause, because I, yeah, be, I'm talking about it because I read the manga in, like, 2020, like, May, like, April, May, June 2020, and that was, like, you know, the most thing I vividly remember from that time is just, like, reading, like, all 180-something chapters of the manga after I watched the first season of the anime, it's, like, no, I think it was, like, I read through the manga, I read through, like, 30 chapters of the manga, watched the anime, season one of the anime, and then... Yeah, and then read through the rest of it. Yeah, oh man, it's 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 just it's good. It's great. <laughs> it's great, man. It's great. Yeah, I guess other ones I've been seeing. There's one. There's this one called Panty and Stocking with Garter Garter Belt. That's re really cool. Uh, <laughs> it's it it, it uh, I wouldn't say it's fan servicey, but there's a lot of sexual references in it <laughs> it's it's extremely vulgar and extremely freaking crude but you know like it it's it bounces out by being very humorous you know uh you know there's a, there's like some toilet toilet ish humor in it but like maybe not as much as like a family guy episode yeah the the thing about it is that it, it specifically looks like a western cartoon you know uh it's an anime made by Japanese people. This is a studio called Gainax, and it intentionally looks like, for most of it, uh, it looks like a Western cartoon. So, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's about angels <laughs> uh, uh, fighting ghosts, I think. <laughs> uh, I finished White Album. It was great. It's the best a harem show that's not a harem show. <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. It's an amazing drama. Uh, 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 if you decide to watch it, like, and you find, if you start watching White Album and, like, are thinking through the first four episodes, this is kind of boring and really slow paced. You know, I don't think, I don't think the pacing really becomes that much better. Well, I mean, like, in terms of, like, stuff happens. Like, stuff definitely happens throughout the show. But, like, this, it, it gets rolling after episode five, as I've said before. So, yeah. Watch that if you're into drama. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so should I move on to the segment, man? Anything else? Anything Anything else, man? Anything else? Uh, where will Harden end up? <laughs> uh, in a fat suit. <laughs> No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Dude, I started digging for like a minute and then just immediately gave it up. What the hell? Oh, man. Hey, oh, man. Oh, man. The show Panty and Stocking has like, it has like one like cool, yeah. The, the music in it is kind of interesting. Like, there's this one song that's like really like fun. That's like basically like a Kesha song. <laughs> it reminds me. It reminds me of that like era, that late two thousands, early twenty tens, like Black Eyed Peas. Like remember, remember when pop music was specifically like trying to be so electronic and glitchy, you know, like Trio Tree and stuff, you know. I don't know. I kind of miss that era, man. Of just like. Just being like, no, we're embracing being extremely electronic and like kind of trashy at the same time. Like Kesha, yeah, Kesha was the one that really embodied that, you know. But it was more of like an aesthetic. It wasn't, yeah, obviously. Yeah, stuff about Dr. Luke, yeah, not too good, you know. <laughs> I probably don't need to explain that, right? Yeah, so I guess that's what's been going on. Oh, man, let me move to the segment because I feel like I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, I've bookmarked some things, so... Uh, in response to me maybe not finding stuff naturally, I guess I'll just cut to, like, stuff I bookmarked. So, yeah. See you in the next segment. Somewhat related to a thing I mentioned <laughs> previously. <laughs> There's this tweet from an account called Legion Hoops. I think it's legit. I think it's legit. It, 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 uh, links to, like, The Athletic, uh, a writer for The Athletic, which is a reputable source. But it says... The Mavericks have had discussions with Luka Doncic about decreasing his preferred playing weight this summer. 
Uh, <laughs> he has a preferred playing weight. I don't know, man. I don't know. There's been a lot of stuff in the offseason of him, like, looking fit, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing. The skinny Luca being a thing. I guess we'll see, but I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> just just, just a, li a little funny thing uh, to start us off. Here's one uh, thing that I bookmarked. There is a, t a tweet from someone who says, Serious question, if the Grateful Dead is not the greatest band of all time from the United States, then who is? And uh, I think this is a, a tiny bit of fodder for quote tweets. So yeah, let me just read through some of them. A bunch of bands are just, yeah, a bunch of bands are just being posted here. Just pictures of bands. <laughs> someone someone just said Prince on, like, vocals, guitar, drums, bass, keys. <laughs> the Stooges, Talking Heads, Devo, Velvet Underground, Credence, not, not Credence, Clearwater Revival. Cake, Velvet Underground again. Streetlight Manifesto? <laughs> Public Enemy, I, uh, Band, though? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it's like, I don't know. Uh, to me, like, a, a hip-hop group or a rap group are different from a band. I don't know. I was thinking of maybe quote-tweeting this, but, like, I probably would have just said, I don't know, me, I'm thinking kind of uh, very simply, I don't know, Paramore, Green Day, like, uh, like, <laughs> Local Natives re most recently, I don't know. Uh, local Natives are a, a band that has literally, uh, doesn't have a bad album, though, right? They don't have a bad, bad or mediocre album, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I think Sunlit Youth is kind of somewhat their weakest album, but there's some really good songs on there. Yeah, as I put in the top 10 list. Yeah, Fountain of Youth, Past Lives, Everything All at Once, uh, Sea of Years. Yeah, Masters I really like. Uh, I've grown to like Jellyfish. Yeah, but I don't know. Any American band, the greatest American... Yeah, a lot of people would just say Bruce Springsteen, I feel like. Eiley Brothers, Steely Dan, <laughs> Hate Breed, Talking Heads. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting saying Wu Tang Clan, though. I mean, I guess they are a band. I mean, I don't know. I guess like I have the limited perception of a band as like there's members who play instruments, but like you know, uh, 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 Backstreet Boys could be a band. Oh man. Someone, anything, the Beatles, <laughs> ah, man, bad brains. Okay, <laughs> this this is gonna be a long segment before I cut, I guess. REM, Sonic Youth. Uh, 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 yeah, I haven't listened to a bunch of these. <laughs> Home is where. <laughs> we. Oh no, not we. Oh, that's Van Halen. I thought that was. I thought that was the Weezer logo for a minute. Oh my God. My Chemical Romance? Eh. <laughs> Is My Chemical Romance the best emo band of all time? Like, yeah, probably not. I don't know. I don't know what it would go to. Emo band? Like, eh. The best pop punk band of all time. That's Paramore. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, I'd put Taking Back Sunday over... I'd put Taking Back Sunday over My Chemical Romance. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah, okay, I think I think I'm think pretty much done here. A lot of people are saying saying Parliament Funkadelic and uh, The Stooges and freaking, yeah, Devo. Why Devo? What the hell? Guided by Voices, Pere Ubu. <laughs> no one's saying LCD sound system. No one's saying The Strokes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it probably can't be The Strokes because of freaking what they put out after uh, their second album, but... You know, New Abnormal, though, pretty damn good album. I mean, just saying. Someone will put Television, uh, <laughs> the first three Mars Volta albums, <laughs> Fugazi, every Miles band from 1969 to 1975, Peak at the Drive-In. <laughs> oh, man. Andrew W.K. Oh, man. Anything else? Anything else? There's a band called The Band. <laughs> Crazy Horse, ZZ Top, Butthole Surfers, Sleep, <laughs> The Impressions. A lot of people are putting Wu-Tang. Joyce Manor. Really? <laughs> Only one band has free bird. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. A lot, yeah. The Art Ensemble of Chicago. <laughs> Oh, man. Any band that played with James Brown, Yola Tango, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, bombed the music industry. Uh, Metallica? Ween? 
Uh, dead Kennedys, Ramones. Okay, yeah, I'm just naming about. Yeah, this is just turning into like uh, uh, James Murphy, man. Just turning intro. <laughs> Gil Scott Heron. I mean, you know, yeah. Okay, moving on. Someone tweeted, "Wait, why are we asking men what they taught a Barbie? It isn't for them." <gasps> I mostly, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I don't know. That's my take. I really taught. I'm, I'm. I really had a thought of like maybe I should like go to a theater and see it. You know, but I don't. I don't know, man. I, I'm just not that person, man. I'm just not that person who who goes to to films, to movies. You know, it really is a thing that like the movies of that I wanted to go to of my own volition are really just YA book adaptions, right? The Hate You Give, Love Simon, and uh, uh, Everything Everything were like three that I went to on my own. <laughs> that he specifically was like, I want to see this film. I don't know. Is, other than that, it's like, I don't know. There really aren't films. <laughs> that I feel like I was maybe interested in Booksmart, but I eventually just watched that on Amazon. Yeah. Someone tweeted, why is Lana Del Rey traveling the South like she's a Democratic candidate trying to flip her state blue? <laughs> This is, I think this is in response to like a, a report, like a photo or something, like, or a, a video that had her like working at a Waffle House. I don't know, something about that. I don't know, just something funny, I guess. If anyone wants some WNBA updates, yeah, because the WNBA is a thing, I probably should pay more attention to it. The, 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 the Cliff Notes version is that the Aces are just dominating and uh, in the East, uh, the Liberty, the New York Liberty are pretty damn good. Uh, Liberty have uh, Sabrina Ionescu, Brianna Stewart, Courtney Vandersloot. The Aces have Candace Parker, Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray, uh, Kelsey Plum, uh, Jackie Young. Like yeah, a lot of a lot of all stars, a lot of talent. Uh, they're they're currently twenty one and two, and like there's a release that they put out. Medical update earlier today: Las Vegas Aces forward Sash Center Candace Parker underwent successful surgery on a fracture in her foot. Parker has been playing on a fracture all season, but after consulting with doctors, the only option for her to be healthy again and avoid further injury was to have surgery. She is out indefinitely and will work her way towards getting healthy as soon as possible. So yeah, that's probably, that's pretty significant, right? I mean, I don't know how much she was contributing, but yeah, she's, yeah, she's 30, like, 6, I think. Yeah, she's like 36 years old uh, currently, but... I don't know. I would assume the Aces would still be fine, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I wonder if people are saying anything about, like, you know, the Aces, Aces being a, an obvious, like, super team or, like, what, how people feel about that or that, like, you know, Candace Parker chose to join the Aces after going to the Sky. But, like, yeah, that, yeah, it's a thing that's come out, come out that uh, the coach of the Sky, the head coach of the Sky, like, uh, took a job with the Toronto Raptors, you know, and like it, it kind of yeah. He took like an assistant coaching job with the Toronto Raptors in the NBA, and like it, it kind of left a sour taste in like and uh, people's mouths. Like I, I would assume from uh, an ESPN show uh, I watched that dealt that talked about it. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like Candace Parker chose to leave this guy, and then Courtney Vandersloot left. Right? Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, it seems like the WNBA, yeah, it seems the Aces are probably gonna, like, go really far. Pro they're probably the favorites to win the championship there right now. And, yeah, I probably should be focusing on it, yeah. Uh, there's gonna be some star players entering in the next few years, let me just say. I mean, also another significant thing in that front, yeah, Aaliyah Boston, the girl who was in the freaking Final Four just, like, four or five months ago was an all-star starter <laughs> she literally got voted as an all-star starter uh this season <laughs> her rookie year like literally just to go from being in the final four for south carolina and then like oh no no i'm just an all-star starter you know <laughs> yeah it, i would assume the indiana fever aren't that good of a team but still it's pretty that's pretty interesting uh, if i must say so myself this is an interesting thing I bookmarked. They're literally, yeah, there's been so much talk about this Barbie movie, and I guess, I don't know, I've already said that, like, me seeing it, like, I'm not that interested, but, yeah, someone posted, uh, uh, yeah, there's been <laughs> lots of discussion about it being feminist, woke, you know, people hating it, a certain someone, 
uh, friggin' making a whole video destroying the movie and stuff, and people talking about uh, how it's a great moment, how, like, the, you know, Barbie Oppenheimer thing event, joint event, is just a great move, a moment for people enjoying movies and enjoying going to the movies in general. But, yeah. Uh, I guess I bookmarked this thing where someone posted uh, a monologue given by one of the characters in Barbie, uh, played by America Ferreira, who I uh, only know <laughs> for being in the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants movie, because I watched that. Yeah. Uh, let me just read this. Let me just read this in my uh, reader voice. All right. Uh -uh. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart, and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough like we have to always be extraordinary but somehow we're always doing it wrong you have to be tin but not too tin you can say what you want to be tin you can never say what you want to be tin you have to say you want to be healthy but you also have to be tin you have to have money but you can't ask for money because that's crass you have to be a boss but you can't be mean you have to lead but you can't squash other people's ideas you're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to be a career woman, but also always be looking out for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane, but if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be a part of the sisterhood. But always stand out and always be grateful, but never forget that the system is rigged. So find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. You have never, you never, you have to never get old, but never be rude. Never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's too hard. It's too contradictory, and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. I'm just so tired of watching myself and every other single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is true for a doll just representing women, then I don't even know. <laughs> uh, apparently this is a monologue given. Like, this is a, like, a monologue given <laughs> in the Barbie movie <laughs> that, like, Mattel greenlit Greta Gerwig and, like, to make. And it's like... Yeah, I don't know. It, I just find it interesting. What is my base? What is my opinion on like the Barbie movie actually being like a lot, a lot deeper on than what it is, which you know, what it could have been, which is just like a plain like movie tie-in. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's cool. I don't know. I did watch one of Greta Gerwig's previous films, Lady Bird. I thought it was cool. Uh, Sacramento. <laughs> you know, I tweeted once after the Sacramento Kings made that trade for Sabonis. Right? And, like, a bunch of Kings fans were being uh, up in arms about it. Like, what if Lady Bird was something about something deeper this whole time? But, I don't know. It's, I guess I just found it interesting that, uh, apparently this movie has that entire monologue in it, man. It's like, damn. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> and, yeah, I guess, like, you know, a lot of people are tweeting, like, I did not expect it to be so emotional and so deep and, like, have this poignant of a message for women and it's cool yeah i mean i i don't know i don't know what i really did to be honest by like saying that <laughs> by saying that whole thing as someone who's not a woman but yeah <laughs> i just found it interesting you know there was one tweet that i uh quote uh bookmarked uh <laughs> or <laughs> a week or so back yeah it's been a while since i put one of these out someone said we need to be discussing how hot otters are and I don't know, like, like, should I read through quote tweets of it and find something interesting? A lot of people quote tweeted it with pictures. And then someone t replied, please don't, this is deeply uncomfortable for us and objectifying and authors are incredibly self-conscious as is. And then the original poster of the tweet replied, I understand how my tweet got misconstrued. It was meant to be a joke since several of my author friends joke about how hot each other are. I didn't even think anyone outside of those people would notice the tweet. I would, ac would never actually objectify random authors. And that's basically like a lot of Twitter and tweets in a nutshell is like someone tweets something nonchalantly like without thinking too deeply about it and then like it becomes a whole nother thing entirely i th th yeah this was i guess if you want the tr all the traditional staples of this series as of this era uh the book publishing twitter drama on top of like what what freaking platform are we going to move to if this goes away right the current yeah a, a previous like kind of 
a discussion was like uh, a discussion of like attractiveness of otters and like does that have a factor is it is it a thing uh, that should be talked about you know uh, like uh, you know a lot yeah and like some people maybe being like we have to be attractive too we have to be freaking we have to focus on, we have to talk about our looks too in addition to our words aren't our books enough i don't know let me yeah i think a lot of quote tweets of this are pictures but maybe there's some interesting statements here yeah uh okay let me see someone uh, the first quote tweet here is, There was a time I believed all writers had weird glasses, bent backs, and morose faces. <laughs> I'd feared becoming that way as an older writer. The pictures I've come across on writers' community and my hot face say my earlier belief had been wrong. There's a lot of writers who don't have glasses. I don't know. It's kind of weird if you're a writer and you don't have glasses. Let me just say. It's like, ah, what a flex, man. It's like, you're a writer and you have 20-20 vision. It's like, come on, man. Really? Like, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> 2020 vision writers stand up <laughs> oh man there's some pictures uh yeah i guess i should read the text wait really writers are hot now <laughs> uh pictures yeah people they're absolutely positively no hot horror otters they don't exist okay <laughs> oh man anything anything else from this discourse that i missed <laughs> I'm laughing so hard at millennial and Gen Z otters responding to this tweet by posting a terse pic. <laughs> there's been some like, there's been some like quote dude. There's been some tweets that have been like, like post if you're over, if you're thirty and over, post yourself. And then yeah, I don't know. It's interesting seeing that. It's like no, that means you're born in 1993, man. Oh man, speaking of speaking of someone born in 1993, let me move on from this discourse that I'm not too like interested in. I don't have much of a, an opinion on uh, someone born in 1993. Uh, <laughs> Ariana Grande. Uh, <laughs> there's been some stuff about her, you know. I mean, apparently, I don't know. It's just it's just it's nothing seri that serious, but like I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, she, she got, apparently she and her husband have gotten divorced, and she apparently is dating someone else, and that someone else, uh, might have been, might or might not have been Spongebob in a Broadway play, <laughs> in Spongebob the Musical, and then, <laughs> yeah, basically, that's, bas that's basically it, I don't know, uh, yeah. Anything to add to that? There were some, like, kind of mean tweets about that, I don't know, <laughs> that I kind of don't want to go over. Where's the discussion? I need the discussion that gets, like, uh, formed from this. Where's the discussion, man? Where is the discussion? Okay, there's a lot. Okay, all right. Okay, some of these, some of these. Okay. Oh, uh, man, please. <laughs> do I have any, and yeah, while I'm looking, do I have any entries for, like, or some attractive uh, writers. <laughs> I don't know. I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I probably probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> what do I? What would I? What would I say personally about this? <laughs> How hot otters are. <laughs> uh, this is a joke, you know. <laughs> it is a joke. Anything? I have a friend whose name I will not mention. Oh, here we go. And upon meeting with some big New York publishers about her YA, she was asked her age. She responded. She was in her late twenties, and then the big, the, and the big New York publisher person responded with relief. Oh, you look younger. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. The big publisher person continued. Continued. It's easier to sell a pretty young face. I have thoughts about superficiality in publishing, how Hollywood beauty standards have infiltrated the writing world, but in lieu of that rant, I will say, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, following up to say, I know that the OP was joking here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. This, like, yeah, there you go. This basically was was another thing. Yeah. I guess that was somewhat uh, the, the, the discourse that stemmed from that, that I saw, like, a week or two ago. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, does TikTok, uh, like all things, have an influence on that? Like, how books are have to be, not have to be, but like the rise of like, if you want your book to be, like, really, really, really popular, you probably have to market it on TikTok, and you probably have to market yourself on TikTok by virtue of that. I don't know. It's a thing. 
yeah, I don't know, it, yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that is the conclusion, okay, that is the book drama for this <laughs> episode, there you go, I did it, <laughs> okay, so after a lot of searching, I realized, wow, there's, there's really nothing left, there's, that really was it, oh, man, I think it's fine, the, the, this segment, it really is just, like, an add-on to uh, an episode, it, it shouldn't be, like, what the main thing an episode is about, but, I don't know. Uh, it, it just kind of sucks that, like, I can't find, like, naturally, I can't naturally find just, like, that many, like, good discussion inspi- Oh, whoa, that was close. Ins discussion inspiring tweets anymore? That much? I don't know. I, there, dude, like, I go on certain days, and, and then, I don't know. I think I should just probably just do a thing where I bookmark tweets and then I <laughs> talk about them but I don't know like I already have I already have my thoughts on them but you know I guess I guess it could be cool to just uh going forward bookmark them so yeah anything else to wrap this up because this is probably has been going on way too long but I haven't done one of these in like two weeks so yeah uh uh one more NBA ting there's a certain other player in Philly who might be wanting out of uh Philadelphia Maybe, maybe sooner rather than later. I don't know. All I know is that he wants to win a championship. That's all he wants to do. He wants to win a championship. Either here or anywhere else. You just, I mean, yeah. He wants to win a championship. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. I mean, I don't know. If I'm New York, if I'm the Knicks, if I'm the Knicks, uh, I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be like, keep watch on him, man. Keep watch. <laughs> keep watch on the process. <laughs> We're gonna watch this process, man. <laughs> oh God, uh, man. Ooh, that's that's basically it. Another NBA related thing. There's this like thing called the Immaculate Grid, which started in baseball. And like how it works is that there's like teams on one side, teams on another. Like the left and top sides are teams. And, like, you have to, like, find the intersection, players that fit the intersection of those. And on, like, the very right side, there's, like, a characteristic, like, you know, playoff, 40-point playoff game most recently, uh, average 20 points per game, 500 trees, you know. It started in baseball, but the basketball version of it is hoop grids. I've been doing it for, like, a few days. I've been trying to do it. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. I got, like, an, uh under a hundred rarity score once because that's how because there's like a rarity thing uh yeah of like you know you can complete it with like very like recent basic players that like a lot of people guess and the percentage is like really high but the real the real basketball knowledge thing is to like uh complete it with a percentage like under 100 especially and they've added a thing recently where like if it's under like 20% or 15% it's like bronze Un uh, under 10% it's silver under 5% it's like gold so yeah anything else entertainment wise what am I planning to do man? what am I planning to read just books I don't know I'm not, I haven't really been reading that much man <laughs> yeah I don't know I, I've been thinking about my summer reading dude I've literally just read one book in June and one book in July <laughs> and hopefully I'll, I'm gonna read one book by August yeah uh, audiobooks yeah the, uh, my audiobook count the, here's the thing I finished the yeah my audiobook count is two so far this year one is frankly in love and then the other is uh, the turd to all the boys book and that's it man I don't know but uh, yeah <laughs> I I'm just a thing where like I'm just at a point where like, I feel like I've read enough you know like I I like I enjoy reading still I always like get out I've been exercising uh, pretty consistently lately I guess and like I I guess I view reading as like a side thing to that like uh, to me like walking and like uh, <laughs> getting a ball and like hooping around a bit <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah when previously in like 2021 I saw reading is the primary thing I wanted to do uh, and like uh, in June of 2021 I got a basketball and like factored that in I don't know I explained it on a previous episode so yeah anyways 
I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. This has gone on way too long, but yeah, I like these long. <laughs> like the process it'll take to get Damian Lillard, that's what you have to do. Heat fans, just be patient, man. Dude, just be patient, man. I don't know. You have other things to do. You have freaking Messi in Miami, just freaking like uh, hidden freaking game winners. It's okay. It's all, it's all right. You have hockey, I guess. <laughs> they play hockey in Florida. You have, uh, you know, arguably the worst governor <laughs> in America right now. It, it's fine. It's fine, Miami. It's fine. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty much it for this episode. And yeah, see you next time.